I'm clean shaven for once. Anyway, and sold the bowl project. Got a layer of sinew on it. And one of the marvelous things about short bows is I didn't even use four tendons to put one layer on this. So economy of materials. And you can see that it's not dried yet all the way, but I've got red dye on the back with black bands underneath it. And so when it dries, subtleties. Now, the subtleties of what makes a beautiful bow. You know, you don't, but you could certainly paint the back, put snakeskin on it. But sometimes, you know, smallest, subtlest things add to the total, say, attractiveness. Now, this is funny. Let's kind of jump a little bit. And this started out <clears throat> as an extremely noodly bow, recurved, skinny. The proportions were uninspiring. But when I shortened it, I even love the little deflex here. You know, I'm not one of these people, it's got to have four inches of reflex. No, it doesn't. The actual real little horse pose, say, North American. I'm not talking about like uh, Scythian or Turkish and those things, the hornbows. But they generally weren't like reflex to the moon. They did their job. But this is almost perfect. I'm looking at this. The once noodly bow can't fit the whole thing, so let's just look at half. Didn't have good proportions. It was not inspiring. It was Osage, and I didn't even like the way the, sorry, but the handle didn't even inspire me. But once I knocked some length off of it and turned it into the short bow that it wanted to be, it's like, wow, I love the handle section. This works with this. You know, we're all trying to chase the perfect bow. The the golden ratio, the Fibonacci number. And this one comes close to the, the bow golden ratio. Um, the kid is going to really like it once it's functioning. Now I'm looking at this little short thing. I'm looking at this little small uh, petite short thing. Let's get as many adjectives as possible. I identify as a sh petite short thing. I'm looking, it reminds me of a story, Norm Blaker, look him up, he was one of these dudes that would be on Michigan Outdoors, and he would be able to shoot aspirin out of the air, people would chuck aspirin in the air and he could shoot it out. Well, I stopped by Norm Blaker's house one afternoon to pick up some stone points, he was an amazing stone point maker, and uh, talking to his wife, Norm was out hunting, he was coming back soon, lovely woman. All dressed in buckskin. I mean, you know, these people live the life. Would you like some tea and crumpets? Exaggerating, but that's the kind of thing. Very pleasant woman. All of a sudden, the door slams open. And this dude that I swear is like six and a half feet tall and built like a bear. Mother effer. I didn't see a single effing deer. And my buddy in the other tree stand got the biggest buck I ever saw. And all of a sudden, this bow comes whipping across the room and crashes into the wall. Well, hello, Norm. And he saw me, and it's like, oh, I never have good luck when I hunt with somebody else. And he said, this stupid little bow. People sent him bows, manufacturers, so they could say, Norm Blaker shot my bow, you know, and advertise it. And he was like, a oh, stupid little bow. It was just a little tiny, weird recurve thing. It was clever, but <sighs> he showed me this is, I actually picked up the point I was going to say. He showed me this North American, Lakota style, or Dakota, or, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to disrespect this particular tribe, but I don't remember which brand it was. It was a Northern Plains hornbow. And it was tiny. And I remember reading in Jim Ham's uh, Bows and Arrows of Native Americans. It was that little book that really taught me how to make my first successful bow. It said a lot of people look at these hornbows and they, they ask if they're children's bows. And I'm like, those fools. And I looked at this hornbow and I can't believe it. I actually said to Norm, is this a kid's bow? Duh, because it was so small. But you could draw that thing way back because it had bison horn on the inside, you know, and sinew back on the outside. It was an incredibly short bow 
with a long draw length. And I actually said, stupidly, this is a kid's bow. But that leads me into another point. I'm thinking, you know, something like this. I, I forget how long this is, like 42 inches or something like that. But in Osage, in sinew back, you could probably get like, you could probably draw this thing back 23, 24 inches, you know, without doing damage. And you could certainly get 50, 55 pounds out of it, which is incredible for something that people on the outside, in the outside world, would perceive as a children's bow. You could walk around with a quiver packed with the sharpest, razor-sharp broadheads with Hello Kitty stickers, and you could go anywhere, put Hello Kitty stickers on your, on your quiver full of, like, these deadly broadheads, and you could walk down Main Street in New York City, New York City, and people would just think you've got a toy. <laughs> know what I mean? Jelly bean? It's, it's kind of amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I hope the kid likes this and I hope the kid doesn't freak out. You know, it's like, I want to play with it now. It's like, phew. you know, I'm old school. You just have to wait. You know, I'm going to also bring, uh, I, 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 I split off some sections from this log. I've been looking at this log. It's a 43-inch log, right? And uh, of Osage, and it's like, you know, that's, that's a pretty good log. I scraped it off, you know, I, I debarked it, and it had like all these cracks in there. It had one major crack, and then a whole bunch of secondary cracks, because it had to relieve itself when it's dried. This, this thing's like five years old, at least, six, seven, eight years old. It's fully cured. And... It would have been such a simple matter, but nobody knows about that. That's why I'm telling you, is if, if you're not going to take your log that you're going to create bows with and split it right away, which is not necessarily a good idea, because I told you, you know, a lot of woods, uh, I've got choke cherry, I can show you, It's they would have been beautiful, but I split them, and when they dried, they got all sorts of wonky and twisted and just weird. They went from being straight into snake bows. I digress. You cut your damn log and just, you cut it with a chainsaw. You got a chainsaw in your freaking hands. Just pick the ugliest knot and then just saw lengthwise through that knot down to the center. Boom, stick it away. Forget about it. It's going to dry slower, but you're going to have straight staves when you finally get around to splitting it a year later or whatever. You know, I'm a big proponent of that. Now, some people don't listen when you talk. They don't hear. And I'm saying to a friend of mine who's a bow maker, I go, this is how I do it. Take a log, rip a straight line down it, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I don't like doing that. I split it because it follows the grain. Well, listen to my words I'm saying there, Jasper. When you take your saw and you rip a single line down to the center, and it's a decent sized log, you're only not following the grain lines in one spot. The rest can be split. You're only, that's only, that is only one. Let me repeat myself. You're only eliminating one portion, or actually two, because there's two sides to that split, where you're not going to be following the grain. You're going to slow down the drag, you're going to have, when you do split it, it's not going to twist. It's not going to get all wonky. It's going to be stable as it dries. It's going to be supported. You're going to have straighter staves. doesn't matter with some woods, but man, a lot of woods, because I work in a variety of woods. You split it right away. Whoop, propeller twist. Roller coasters. Whereas... I, I can show you once I split that elm, if I'm going to split it. I don't need to, really, because it's straight grain. I'm going to have wonderful, straight, supported while it dried staves. Just do it, you know. You've got your immediate bow making stuff, and you've got stuff stashed away for years. What else was I going to say? I think that's about it. Economy of materials. 
<laughs> oh, I was going to say, I split that log. Boom, 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 boom. And it was one of these rare Osage um, straight grain. I mean, straight grain. I wound up getting seven horse bows to be horse bows out of that log. And I'm going to send one to my friend Warpath Archery. Here you go, buddy. Because we kind of give presents back and forth to each other. That's the bow community way. Other than that, I don't think it's ever going to stop raining. If you're in Michigan, this it's been like monsoon season. Yup, that is my story. I'm sticking to it. Have a good one. This is going to be such a cool ball. I'm getting close.